Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. And as you can see, I am coming to you yet again from Emily's hospital room. This is a different room than the one we were in last Friday. And we had to change rooms because she had to come back to the epilepsy floor. It's technically the pediatric uh, ICU floor, but this is where they have the epilepsy rooms because on Saturday night she had a good bit of seizure activity so they brought her here to hook her back up to an EEG and that will determine you know what kind of seizures that she's having still even after the brain surgery and all of that. So they're in the process of working all of that out and figuring out exactly what type of surgery we need to do next and meanwhile she's doing very well we hopefully will get to go home in a few days she's trying to get stronger well I don't know if she's trying as hard as we'd like her to try but she's basically got to be able to walk and get in and out of the car for us to get her home and so that's what we're working on right now and the neurologist is changing her medication a little bit as long as she's here they figured they'd go ahead and wean her off of the one that she has been on that hasn't apparently been very effective and try a new one so while they decrease one they increase the other and that's you know that's how you do medicine I'm sure all of you guys know that so anyway uh, I thought I would come to you with a quick Friday reads I have actually the last few days I feel like I've had a better print reading experience than the few days before and after immediately after her surgery during those few days I really did good just to get my Bible reading done you know I'm reading through the Bible right now in three years and it's the midpoint of the second year so I'm in Psalms which is exactly where I should be to stay on track and also last week I finished The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren and so I was happy to get that done that was a very good book and I finished up a couple of other books which I talked about in my last Friday Reads. So those were all of the books that I was close to finishing by the end of June and finally finished them by the end, or, you know, the first week of July. So once I got those done, then I was looking at another stack of books that I had started in the month of June, barely, but I had not made much progress. I kind of lost my momentum somewhere around the third week of June when earlier in June I was you know reading a chapter out of a bunch of different books and I I guess I kind of kind of maybe reached my saturation point of how many print books I could read from in one day and I think my good number is 8 to 10 that's about as many as is comfortable so I'm good with that and of course my currently reading list also includes books that I'm listening to on audio so Altogether, there's been maybe, I think, 14 is the most I've had on my currently reading list at any one time this, you know, these past few weeks. Still not to the Shannon Riddler standards of 22 to 24 on my currently reading list. Shannon, I'm just having a hard time getting <laughs> getting to your level. But uh, anyway, it's a goal. So what I am currently reading right now, I have not finished very much these past few days. Um, well, I take that back. I, I think I finished a couple of things. I did listen to an audiobook on Hoopla. I, I borrowed it accidentally. I was just trying to put it on my list to come back to later, and I ended up accidentally borrowing it. It doesn't meet any of the summer reading criteria. Basically, this summer I'm reading Summer Romance Book Bingo, I'm reading the Sunshine State books for middle grade, and I'm reading some review books and my book club books. And this was a middle grade book written by Jeff Hirsch, who also wrote The Eleventh Plague, which I enjoyed. And this is called The Darkest Path. And I don't have a way to show you a picture of it or anything right now, but I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It was about a boy who was escaping from a militant religious group who was trying to take over futuristic America. And it was really good, I, I thought. Now, it could have had a little more to it there was not a whole lot of you know world building and all of that you basically just learned about the group and what they were about and what the situation was with our main character and his journey through you know being captured by them and then 
staying with them for a few years before he was able to actually escape. His brother also was captured, but his brother sort of bought into the whole thing and he kept trying to you know tell his brother no this is not right we need to try to go back home and all of that so I thought it was uh, it was a good book I got into it more so than the Sunshine State book that I'm reading right now which is also kind of a not really a creepy book just an adventure book it's about a young boy well it's I'm sorry it's called Boy X and I do not know who the author is I will do my best to type it in the description but it's one of our Sunshine State books, and it's about a boy who has been injected with something to make it, it heightens his senses. He is also on a weird kind of an island. His mother is there too, and she has been exposed to a weird virus, and so he's trying to get across the island to get help. Meanwhile, he's having to cross through the jungle, and there's all these strange mutated creatures and animals and things like that. And um, it's it's pretty good, but I'm I'm not into it as much as the other one that I just finished. So anyway, those are what I've been listening to on Hoopla, on Audible. I thanks to Elizabeth Tyree, am now listening to The House at Riverton on Audible. The reason I didn't realize it was on Audible earlier is because on audio it is titled The Shifting Fog. And it does have a few extra things on the audio that the print book doesn't have. I decided to go ahead and continue reading the print book, but I'm also listening to it on audio. We are doing a read-along of this on my Goodreads group, Lizzie Face Comfy Corner. And if you participate with me, then you also get a point for Sarah's Summer Romance Book Bingo. So some, I think most of the people who are reading it with me are not doing the bingo, but if you're doing the bingo and you want to read this, then jump on in. We are supposed to be about the halfway point right now. I'm a little behind. I'm not quite there, but we're so laid back. Just jump in, read it whenever you feel like it, and comment. There uh, is a discussion thread now for all six of the parts. There's actually only four parts to this book, but for the purposes of our six-week read-along, I divided the first two parts into two parts, so that makes six. Anyway, we're, we're trying to finish it by the end of July, so jump on in if you haven't already, and if you have started reading it, be sure you go on my Goodreads group and comment about it. I would love to read your thoughts. And as if I could read your thoughts. <laughs> you know what I mean. I would love to read your typed thoughts. <laughs> anyway, uh, the other things that I am currently reading on audio, also on CD, I have started Lilac Girls by Martha Hall Kelly. This is our library book club book for next Thursday, and I'm probably not going to get it finished. And I may not get to go to book club. I have already missed my mystery book club that I lead at the library. It was yesterday. I didn't get to go. I had to stay here at the hospital with Emily. And that's okay. It, everything was covered. I'm sure they had a good discussion. For yesterday, they talked about... Oh, goodness. What is the name of it? It's that Molly, Molly McRae Highland, Highlands Bookshop Mystery and Plan and Plagiarism. That's the name of it. So that was a cute book. I read that la or listened to that last month and in preparation for this month's book club and didn't get to go. So now the book two, I have it currently checked out on Hoopla. It's called Scones and Scoundrels. And so far, those are the only two books in that series. So that's what I'm doing on audio. And in print, I am also enjoying another, uh, a couple of other Sunshine State books. So these are middle grade books that I am reading in preparation for next school year. Breakout by Kate Messner. I am about a little over half done with that, and I'm enjoying that. And this one I've just recently gotten back into, and it's really cute. It is called Slider by Pete Houtman. It's about a boy who is into eating contests, and his celebrities are people who have won eating contests and I need to look up and see if any of these people he's actually talking about are real people. I suspect that they are and so far this is really fun. I am not far into it. I don't know if you can see from there but it's really cute so far. And then I am also enjoying a pioneer Christian romance. This is City Girl by Lori Wick. It's book three in the Yellow Rose trilogy and I read the 
listened to the first two of these on audio several years ago, and I didn't enjoy the narrator. I didn't like how he voiced the female characters. I thought he made them sound weaker than I felt like they were. And I said then I would probably want to just read this last one in print. I think I, I was thinking that I would be happier with... I would enjoy the reading experience more. I wouldn't be worrying about that the you know what the narrator was doing. And I am. I am enjoying it. So then I have also started the second book in the Cat in the Sex Mysteries by Miranda James. It's called Classified as Murder. These are all books that I started in June, but I did not make much progress in at all. In fact, Breakout was the only one that I was about half done with by the end of the month. Of June all these others I had maybe read just a few pages some of them not even a whole chapter and that is all of those that's everything that that I started in June except for these two which I have not picked up yet since June ended I am reading the little tea shop on Maine by Jody Thomas and I'm a little ways into it but I just haven't picked it up yet and also when life gives you OJ by Erica Perlman I started this for the buzz wordathon last month because it has the word you in the title and even though I think it's a really cute book I just have had a hard time really diving into it. I'm still going to read it. I I did this with the last Buzzword Thought book. It was a middle grade book and it took me like an extra month to get it read. So I don't know. I don't know what my problem is, but I love the cover. It's super cute. It's about a girl who really wants a dog and her grandfather fixes her a practice dog out of an orange juice jug and so she calls him OJ and that's about as far as I've gotten so far but she's got this practice dog so that she can show her parents that she is responsible enough to have a, a real dog so that's cute and the littlest tea shop or the little tea shop on Maine is about some friends who have been friends ever since they were kids now they have finished high school and each has gone a separate direction and now I believe circumstances are going to be bringing them back together. And this book spans a, quite a period of years. Originally, I was going to count this as a contemporary romance for the Summer Romance Book Bingo. But then I realized rather quickly that it is not really contemporary. Not completely. So I'm have, going to have to come up with something different for that category. Meanwhile, I love Jodie Thomas. This is her newest book. And I'm super excited to read it. Then I brought two other books with me that I have not really started yet. One of them I read a few pages of, but I, I'm going to have to start over. This is Ever Faithful by Karen Barnett. This is, uh, this is my review book that was sent to me by Waterbrook and Multnomah. It's one of my review books that was sent to me. And I loved the first two books in the series. I listened to those on audio. I need to check now because those were on Hoopla. And by this point, I think this book is out now and... Um, by the time I get around to finally reading this in print, the audio may be released on, on Hoopla. So I need to check and see uh, if it is, and I'll just definitely go ahead and listen to it. But uh, I have the print copy here. I love the cover. It's awesome. And this is from the Vintage National Park series. So all these books take place in the 20s and 30s. And I have really loved the first two, and I know I'm going to enjoy this one. Then this one is the first book in the Fair Acre series by Miss Reed. I had been trying to read the Thrush Green series. Last year, someone on Instagram did a Miss Reed along, and for some reason, I only got two of them read. I think I started out being behind, and I just never could catch up. So this series is a little bit longer, and they're starting this month with this first book. I think because book six is maybe a Christmas book, so that way it works out where they can read, you know, on through and, and catch the Christmas book at Christmas time, and then next year finish out the series. So I thought rather than trying to catch up, it might be more fun to just go ahead and start Fair Acre and read it with the group if I can keep up. They're not really long books. They're just very slow paced, very enjoyable, but not all of them are on audio, at least not that I can find. And I always do better with audio. And it's written in, the, the style is just, I don't know, it's just not conducive to reading quickly. I guess it's about as good as I can say it. Although very enjoyable, I just have a, lot, a hard time 
getting through them quickly. I don't know any other better way to say it, but that makes it sound like I don't enjoy them. But what I've read so far, I've really liked. So anyway, this is something that I'm going to attempt to go ahead and read in July. And hopefully then I can keep up with the group that's reading the, these uh, books on Instagram. So that is about all I have to tell you this for this Friday Reads. I don't even know how many books I have finished exactly. I should have written that all down before I started filming. But at some point, maybe by next week, that'll be middle of the month. And actually, I guess this week is really more middle of the month. But by next week, I'll try to do more of a mid-month check-in and talk about everything that I finished by that point. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.